the big reveal for our secret excursion today. You gonna tell them now? In Aruba, yeah, because we're fixing to head out. Okay. Butterfly Farm, Natural Bridge, and Beach Day. So we have drunk butterflies flying all around us. <laughs> Welcome to day six Already. in Aruba. Morning of day six, raining like it's Seattle. That is not the sound of the ocean, that is the sound of rain pouring onto our balcony to welcome us to Aruba. And in true form, like the Caribbean does. Oh, voila! It's the clear skies. And if JJ will like tilt the camera up that way more, you can see we have more clouds potentially coming because you already saw how our morning started. I didn't even know it was raining. I was down having coffee. He was inside. I said, did you see the rain? And no, no way. The big reveal, the big reveal for our secret excursion today. Butterfly Farm, Natural Bridge, and Beach Day. Royal Caribbean excursion. They hooked us up. I'm excited about the Butterfly Farm. When you say they hooked us up, you mean they had a reservation available. They did. Available. They, they hooked us up with a new right. excursion. Right. They didn't comp us? They didn't. They, they didn't, don't know who they, you are? They, they didn't. I'm not one of you anemic creatures who can get nourishment from a lettuce leaf. I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I have zest and appetite and I like food. Breakfast day six. I changed it up. I know. Shocking. JJ has the exact same thing. I got banana pancake this morning. It's good. It's not, you know, your best pancake house in your town, but it's good. Of course, you know, they sit under the little burner things or on the burner things, and so it's a little bit dried out, but it's good for something different. I'm not saying I'm gonna forego my donut now. I probably I still can't have it. I probably still have my donut. As soon as you disembark the ship, it's just a few steps into the port terminal, which is an air conditioned facility full of souvenir, jewelry, art shops, as well as a large gathering and seating area. As soon as you exit the terminal, tour staff will be waiting with signs to direct you where to go for your tour. It really helps to have the microphone on as I'm eloquently explaining the process we were going through, so I'll have to tell you about it now. Tour staff will tell you which bus in the parking lot you should go to, and they're assigned by number. When you get to the right bus, you will see the sign in the window with your excursion name. It is 7.45, and they said we're leaving at 7.45. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am the bus driver, the tour guide. Average temperature here in Aruba, it's about uh, 90 degrees with the coolest month that is the month of December and it could be sometimes about 80 degrees. So we don't have no cold weather, no winter. I never, never saw snow in my life. Butterfly Farm is our first stop. Wow, listen to the bird. Can y'all hear the birds? You can hear the birds, I love Goodness. it. All this Those are hummingbirds. outside. Those are hummingbirds. No, those are not. No, those are little yellow finches. Aren't they sweet? So welcome to the Butterfly Park. Your tour guide is already waiting for you to start. Your visit here is a 45 minute stop. It includes a guided tour, which is an explanation about the life cycle of the butterflies. After the tour, there's gonna to be plenty of time to walk around, take pictures, enjoy yourself with the butterflies. Once you're exiting the garden, it's gonna lead you back to our butterfly boutique. Where you can imagine we have everything butterflies in it. The most important part, my favorite part, if a butterfly lands on you, remember to make a wish. It brings good luck. Welcome to the butterfly farm. I'll be your tour guide for the day. I'll explain everything of the butterflies and also a little bit about our garden. We have about 35 different species of butterflies in here. They are all exotic, so you won't get to see them flying outside on Aruba. We have tropical butterflies and we have rainforest butterflies. Tropical butterflies will always drink from flowers. Every single butterfly you see drinking from the flowers, those are all tropical butterflies. 
Now, in the rainforest, the flower starts to big. And if the flower starts to big, the nectar is too deep and they can never reach into it. So they adapt to their environment and they started relying on the fruits that falls off the tall trees. Which is the reason why we have a couple of fruit bars around in the garden. We often like to call them the happy hour bars. <laughs> when the fruit rots, it ferments and it produces a tiny bit of alcohol, which for us is not much, but for the butterflies it is. So they are getting drunk every single day in here and they love it. So we have drunk butterflies flying all around us. One of the ways to find out if a butterfly is really drunk is when you pass your hand really close by and really fast on the fruit bar. And if they don't fly away, they're drunk. So we have a couple of them having the time of their life. In this third stage is where all the transformation happens. They're gonna stay in this stage for a couple of weeks, so they can't move from it. So they're gonna try to blend in with their surroundings, which is the reason why some of them have uh, different colors, different shapes, sizes. They're gonna try to imitate something in the nature. So the chrysalis are not gonna stay with their beautiful colors, basically. They're eventually gonna turn to a darker color, lose their prettiness, that's a sign that the uh, butterfly is forming and they're almost ready to hatch, basically. In here is when the caterpillar is going to transform to become the butterfly. So for the first couple of days, as soon as the caterpillar transforms into the chrysalis, 90% of the caterpillar is going to liquefy themselves completely. Mm. So you're not going to be able to find anything solid. There's no eyes, no antennas, no legs, no body, nothing. It's kind of like a whole DNA suit in there nothing solid. After a couple of days again, all of the cells that they have inside that soup, they're going to start to rearrange themselves back together and they're going to form the whole new insect, which is the butterfly. So every single organ that a butterfly have, they are completely different than the caterpillars. Nothing stays the same. Mm. That whole process that happens in this stage, it's called the complete metamorphosis. As soon as they hatch, they're going to pump the blood so they can expand their wings. Mm. That's the reason why they have to hang upside down. Because when they're born, their wings are 5 to 10 times smaller. And they're completely wet. So they can never fly out immediately after hatching. So they're going to hang upside down so they can start expanding their wings. Once they have it fully expanded, they have to keep on hanging for a couple of hours, depending the size of the butterfly, of course. So they can dry their wings up. Butterflies are all born adults. There's no babies, no kids, no teenagers. Those are all the early stages. So unfortunately, butterflies don't live very long. The average lifespan of a butterfly is only between two to eight weeks. The bigger the butterfly, the shorter the lifespan is gonna be. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the Thank tour. You.
And if you like butterfly decor and want to buy some, this is the place to get it. They have everything butterfly you could possibly imagine. Wall decor and shirts and hats of all sizes, kids and adults. After leaving the butterfly farm, we wound our way through quite a bit of town and then out to the middle of nowhere on the edge of the ocean for our second stop. So the second stop is what they now call the Baby Natural Bridge because this part here is still left as an actual bridge, but this part over here <laughs> fell back in, I think he said 2005, it fell into the water. So they used to be able to walk all the way across there as well, and not anymore because it is no more a bridge. And not only did the rocks fall into the water and ruin the bridge part, but it stopped the water. So this right here <laughs> used to be part of the ocean and it's completely dried up. You can see a little bit of water right down there. A little bit of water still seeping through. But generally, obviously, this right here is super dry. They do dune buggy tours. That's the noise you're hearing out here too. If you're into hot and sandy, dirty adventure, so there's the first part of the bridge, the baby bridge. However, they have all the kind of signs over there, possible collapse, caution. You see, obviously, don't go beyond this point because that's no longer a bridge. But they don't even want you walking on the portion of it that's the baby bridge anymore. And a really nice restroom, gift shop, and snack bar right here. So I guess that's one reason they still bring people here, other than the amazing view. These are, as our tour guide pointed out, <coughs> volcanic rocks. These black rocks all up and down here. Because obviously Aruba was formed by a volcanic eruption or eruptions, as were most of the Caribbean islands. And after a fairly short stop at the Baby Bridge, we head back through the country and once again, back through town to get to our third stop. Here we are at the entrance to Eagle Beach. Got a little playground behind us over there. Yeah, JJ's just gonna sit here under the trees all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> and not, not get out in the sun. It is the hot, typical hot Caribbean sun. This, they say, is one of the nicest beaches in Aruba, and it sure looks like it. I mean, the water even from here is beautiful, and the white sand, wow. I mean, like, super amazing. However, I believe we have to rent chairs and umbrellas. Is that what you remember? I believe if there are any left. We'll figure out from whom and where. Well, the bad news is they are sold out of chairs and umbrellas. I think both companies. Uh, a guy here on the beach was very nice and said there was another company to check with, but he, he thought that they were probably sold out too. So we're gonna try to just find a place to put our bag and go enjoy the water for a little bit. Sherry is digging the water of Aruba. Wow. She's Yeah, pristine beach, absolutely. It's just white sand, no uh, seashells. It's pretty amazing. I think Sherry's digging it. <laughs> and you can see the, the beach is quite busy today. It's uh, extremely warm with a little bit of cloud cover, which is good. And you can see up and down the beach, lots of palapas here, I guess, at these resort areas. And this, all the beach is public, but the, I guess the resorts and hotels have private areas for their guests. This is all public, and it's first come, first serve. So unfortunately, we got here too late to get us a lounge chair and a, an umbrella, but. All in all, it's been a great day. Oh, this is awesome. That was 
the most beautiful beach probably I've ever been on. No, Seven Mile no. Beach. Oh, seven that's Mile true. Beach. And Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman. It's pretty good. But this is number two. I mean, seriously, the white sand and the the no rocky entry and the no, I mean, hardly any fishies. Some some guy said he saw some little fishies and something else that they didn't know what it was. <laughs> but th this was seriously, if you are just in Aruba and you don't know where to go um, and you don't have an excursion, Eagle Beach. Eagle Beach. So right here in town. Right here. Make sure you get here early though, because you know, everything, the chairs and umbrellas were sold Packed out. out. So they don't I, have many. I didn't even ask how much they were. I think they're like three and five dollars or something like that yeah. to rent. Uh, maybe an added deposit that you get back. I don't know. Uh, but I just threw my towel out at the end of the beach by the water, you know, where you saw us earlier and, and just laid on the sand for a little bit. It was great. Highly recommend Eagle Beach. We're headed back to our temporary home. We'll see you in a little bit. We got to stop by the Harley shop first though. Another, another poker chip trip. We just got dropped off by the bus. That's our bus right there. And getting back into the ship is uh, right there. And we're going to the HD store, Harley Davidson to get poker chips. But first we're changing, we being JJ, changing his shoes. Gotta get my gloves on. Cause they help his knees because he can wear his lift. Because you found out when you were in the military that you have what? A leg that's how much longer than the other one? It's about that big. So, you know, Here. like. You wanna see? Oh, the magic lift. See, it's that. That thick. It's that thick, it goes right in my shoe. And uh, he thought he was- Not that y'all care about that. Well, that, you know, that's the interesting part of cruising is all your uh, extra, your extras, your extras in the Aruba port. It's this would be too easy, right? It's downtown. This would be too easy because the Harley Davidson store is right there. But instead, we have to turn here and go all the way down here and out this building. So, don't think you can go the easy route to get out of the port when you're in Aruba, because you can't. Lots of shops in this area. Also, if you want to do the touristy bag or trinket or souvenir or sweatshirt or hat or or sunglasses <laughs> or magnet or heck, stuffed animal. Look at that. They even got stuffed animals. Bags, dresses, little kids clothes. They got them all. And there it is. Right there. Right there. It's the Harley Davidson store. For Aruba. I can't, I can't, I, I don't have an Aruban accent. Right there. Right in the front. We gotta take some poker chips to Texas. We came for poker chips and there they are. How much are they a piece? A final decision. Purple, green, and orange. We're getting them all three. Sold. Thank and you. if you want a sightseeing tour bus, that's not a bus. That's a trolley. Oh, if you want a sightseeing trolley. See those checks right there? We know we're in the right place. And there's a little bit of a line at 1241, heading back to the ship. All they have to do is look at your CPAS card at this point. They don't have to scan it or anything. Here's the wind jammer on a port day. Not too busy, just one side open. That side over there is closed. So just one side. And we don't even need a window seat because we just came in from the sun. So we're sitting right here. JJ switched it up a little bit for lunch. Not much. Okay, let's see. What, what'd you get? Tomato cucumber salad. Oh. Macaroni salad. There you go. The good old fashioned ranch with all the fixings. All the veggies. Chicken, fish, and a little tartar, tartar sauce what for kind the of fish. Like breaded fish and then chicken wings? No, this uh, that's part of a breast and this is a thigh. The sherry conglomerate for the day, it just keeps getting better. I'm telling you, I've been waiting for broccoli. So, uh, you know, they had broccoli, so I had to get broccoli. Broccoli with a chili dog and but, french fries. You know, I had to get my chili dog on. What is that on top of the chili? That is cheese sauce because they didn't have any shredded cheese handy. And then you got to have your french fries, of course, with your chili dog. And then 
the Piesta de Resistance. I can never say that. Why do I keep trying? Uh, sweet potato soup with croutons. Okay, I may actually video the buffet for y'all today because there's kind of some interesting choices. Surprise in the macaroni salad. Newsflash. The macaroni salad contains chunks of chicken. Well, there you go. It's a news for the day. And how That's was the news fish? Flash. Uh, the fish, it was was breaded fried fish, and the so piece, hard. the one piece that I happened to get was more bread than fish, mm. but I'm not sure that that's the case throughout. Oh, okay, more bad news. Cucumber salad, no bueno. Tomatoes were too soggy, tasted as if it was maybe left over from yesterday, but I don't know that for a fact. But It'd be hard to believe that it was, but... I love good cucumber like salad, it. and it does. It has no white onion in it either. either. Mm, no, I haven't been drinking. Huh. But maybe you've been dehydrated. eating day-old tomato salad with vinegar, which might make you drunk. <coughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, not likely. We tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly here, folks. That's it. Let me try Sherry's. Oh, part of my... Part of her... Her... Chili dog. Is that what they call this? Chili dog, yes. But you know what? It's got on it, right? Mayonnaise. Because there's nothing better... Stop it. <laughs> than, a, than a chili dog with mayonnaise on it. It's like a Texas bolognese sauce. Yeah, you know I'm right. Don't give me that look. You know I'm right. Chili and mayonnaise is southern bolognese sauce. Y'all tell me in the comments, right? I'm right. I know I am. Wolfgang Puck would not put that out. Well, that's a chicken bone, so you've already finished it. How was it? The seasoning was good. They, it appears that the Windjammer has pared down some of their options. Right. Like on the salad bar, there's no black olives. There has been no black olives. No fresh mushroom. Um, no seeds, mm. sunflower seeds or anything like I that. I did see sunflower seeds over by the bread the other day. I wish you would have told me. Broccoli is good because it's soft. So if you like crispy broccoli, maybe it's not. Give me that tree root. But yeah, see, he likes the tree trunks. Give me, a, I cut give me off that tree root. The, I cut off the tree trunks. Give me that tree root. Uh, and I had to add salt. I had to add salt, which I never really add salt to any food. Just steam. Um, but they're super soft, so I love it. The chili dog is, of course, very good. The fries are a little crispier today, but I got them from the bottom of the barrel. And the sweet potato soup is very, very hot and good. It's not as flavorful as I thought it was going to be. And I don't really taste, not necessarily taste sweet potatoes, but it's, it's good. It, this is the consistency of a, a potato soup. And I, I like the flavor. I'm just not sure it's sweet, sweet potatoes. The screws are turning, and we're about to push off and head back toward Miami. It was a terrific day. It'll be a beautiful sunset. Now you see a lot of water being pushed as we point the no nose of the ship toward the Caribbean Sea. No, I mean, we bought the Chops Plus One program on the cruise planner, and this is our second. Okay. This is our plus one, and it happens to be at Giovanni's. Okay. We're going to eat Italian. And we're gonna, That's have, Italian. We're gonna have some, you're so good at impressions. That's Italian. You're almost as good as me with my um, accent. That's Italian. Um, but first, we're going to see if we can get some pictures made. Giovanni's, I think. Giovanni's it's table. To, to, tomato, I don't know what it's called. It looks like tomato bread because that's a tomato and it's on a piece of bread. So <laughs> that makes it tomato bread. And then a 
little and to pasta. Yeah, it's a pasta plate. I had some of this bread right here, along with this. You think that's carpaccio? I think so. And the mo mozzarella cheese, amazing. Amazing. And they just brought those to us. I'm not sure if they're on the menu or not, but they're they're good. So we found out the name of the tomato bread. Mm. Focaccini. Focaccini bread. Excellent. Well, he likes tomatoes, so yeah. that would be good. Appetizers. You don't remember what that's called? I do not. And I don't come from his, I don't come from Italian heritage, so he got his oil and vinegar, and we both got minestrone, minestrone soup. soup. I have had minestrone soup before. I did not realize that it had a lot of things in it that I don't like. I'm like a like a seven year old. Oh, if I yes. have something red and green in it, it's getting pushed to the side. However, I'm trying the soup part and letting y'all know how it is. The broth is very good, and I'm sure if you like onions. Peppers. You can save all that for me. <laughs> I don't know what the green red. I know that's an onion. But it also has corn. And that's all I see. Corn carrots. I think that's a carrot. Potato. I mentioned corn. And JJ thinks it has yellow and green zucchini in it as well. Minestrone soup is vegetable soup. Right. There are lots of vegetables that I don't like, unfortunately. So if it has the if it has sherry vegetables in it, it's great. If it if what what sherry vegetables has, do we like? We like corn, and potatoes, and squash and broccoli. That's not minestrone. Well, the first three are. And I don't have my steak knife. Has arrived. Uh oh, he's in trouble. No steak knife. No steak we knife. We can at least look at it. What'd you get? I uh, got the fillet. I believe I got the bocchini with bolognese, something like that. The bolognese sauce that I know is much uh, whiter. It has more cream. Much lighter. Yeah, it has more cream sauce in it. This just looks like a marinara. So, but I haven't tasted it yet. We'll see. Good chunky meat sauce. It's definitely not a bolognese though. It's definitely just a marinara sauce. So, kind of like spaghetti with meat sauce. Jumbo, jumbo noodles? Yeah, it has a good taste though. You have no food in front of you. I do not at the moment because I sent it back. Uh, I order my steak medium rare and sometimes it comes out a little too rare and I prefer to do that because I hate overcooking a steak. Yeah. So they send it back, cook it a little bit longer and it'll probably come back perfect. Because you like it like not mooing but I like it pretty close lightly, to a moo. Lightly mooing. And you kept your sauce. Yes, which I probably won't use because I, I just like the steak. Yeah, you don't ever yep. put anything on your steak. That's Correct. a good steak. Yep. Perfect, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So, give us the review. Very hot. It's going to be a minute. Oh. Well, that's a good reaction. That's a good uh, eye roll and sigh, huh? Pepper, pepper. Out of the park. So my pasta is called bocatini, not bucatini or whatever I called it, and it literally has holes in it, like the long. It looks like thick, a tube. It looks like thick spaghetti, but it, it has holes in it. And it's he said that they make it here before every seating, two hours before. And he said we have a machine for everything. Homemade pasta. Meaning they like make it here and it puts the hole in it or whatever. Like all the pasta they make here on board. Um, and even though it's not like the white or half white, like pink bolognese sauce I'm used to, it is really good. And it does not taste like regular spaghetti with meat sauce. I don't know what's different about it, but it's better. One of the uh, maitre d's or managers came over, well, the one who just popped his head in, and he told us the recipe for the filet because he mentioned that it was different than chops. It's marinated. It's, it's a 12-hour marinade of uh, virgin olive oil, fresh garlic, thyme, and rosemary. Marinate the steak 12 hours, cook it, bon appetit. Y'all give it a try and tell us in the comments how it turned out. Look what they did. We got the big 25 next month. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> Can you believe she's man. put up with this for 28 years? The man. We've been married 25. 
He's yeah, stuck with free. me now. Folks, I'm the priest here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I used to be a priest, so you'll be good. Let me remarry you again. Let's do this, yeah? 28 times. One, two, three. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> Sherry. Happy, Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Many, many happy. Yay. Hey, thank that's the best you. part of the cruise, man. <laughs> that's the best part of the cruise. Thank you. To 25 years. And 25 more. What did you order? I don't know. I had to have her pronounce it for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you can't say it. I, so is it, uh, well, take a bite of the dark chocolate stuff. Is it like a cake or is it a mousse? Oh, it's like a combo. Oh, it's like peanut butter. It's a cold mousse. Oh, okay. With a darker chocolate. Dark chocolate on the outside? Very yummy. Classic Italian dessert. Cannoli with a lovely raspberry sauce. Mm. I'm gonna, okay, let's see. Do I dip it or how do I do this? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Wow. Oh yeah. The crust is sounds crispy. Mm. Yeah. The raspberry sauce is super sweet. And I thought it was gonna overpower the cannoli stuffing, but it did not because that's very sweet too. We are soon to be done with dinner. We're waiting for our check and we're going to see the ballroom dancing, invitation to dancing extravaganza something. And uh, there's a couple on board. And, and if you've cruised before, you know that they like contract with a ballroom dance couple. Well, we saw them earlier in the week. Mesmerizing is the only word I can use to describe them. Um, and we probably showed some of the footage in the previous vlog because they were amazing. I couldn't keep my eyes or the camera off of them watching them. So I think the majority of the show is about them and that's what we're fixing to go to and we'll show you more footage of them. Let me introduce you to my little friend.